Hello, Vinyl Community. Mr. Rick back again with the uh, Classic Rock Albums Volume 2. And uh, this session, I wanted to tell you a little story, something that happened uh, to me about 10 years ago. My next door neighbor came up to me and he said he had a friend who had a barn and he was looking to pour a concrete floor in this barn and wondered if I'd help him. I said, well, it's Saturday. Sure, I'll go ahead and help you. So we went over there and we, this concrete truck came and we helped the guy pour the concrete floor in his barn and it took, you know, about a few hours to do it and we got it done and the man said he didn't have any uh, money to pay us but he would trade us a whole bunch of old stereo equipment that was sitting over in the corner there. He said, okay. Now this guy was a Vietnam War veteran. He was in Vietnam uh, in the late 60s uh, into the early 70s. And he gave us all, he, he had, when he was in Vietnam, he went and he bought the top of the line audio equipment at that time. Uh, there were a set of speakers that I think they must have weighed 40 pounds apiece, but they were gorgeous. They were made of walnut or something like that, but they were extremely heavy. Uh, there was a reel-to-reel -reel in there, I remember, and a turntable, and, you know, just, just top-of-the-line stuff for 1968. And there were three boxes of records. So we took them and put them in the truck and got them home. We split the stuff up, and Tim took the... Uh, the uh, speakers and the amplifier and I took the rest of it and I got the records home and I started to go through them and those records had been sitting in that barn for several years and I don't know if you're familiar with bees mud daubers but they had built nests inside each one of the boxes of these records and I don't know if you know it, but mud daubers, they, they, the jackets of these records were completely destroyed. They had nested in these boxes probably for years, I don't know. But the records were all covered in mud, and the jackets, most of the jackets were just completely devastated and eaten up by these mud daub bees. And I was bit to throw them away, and I started looking at some of the titles, and I said, man, i got to have some of these records. This guy had bought classic rock records that were first, you know, in, the, in their prime in 1968, 69, 70, and 71, and these were some great titles, and that's what I want to share with you. Uh, most of these records, I had to go ahead and put and make new jackets for them, because the bees had completely eaten them up. And I scrubbed and washed these records and washed them and washed them until I finally got them clean enough to where they'd play. Uh, but the first time I want to show you, this is uh, Iron Butterflies in a Gata de Vida from 1968. Um, and I was surprised on how good this album, how clean this album came. Because, I mean, it was covered in mud. Um... When I was a kid in high school, I used to, uh, 20 minutes before the bell would ring, I would take, I knew this, I had heard this album so many times, and I knew it front to back, and I would play this album in my mind. I would lean back in my desk and close my eyes, and I would play In a God of Vida in its entirety in my mind, and when I was through with it, the bell was about to ring and the class was... But uh, this, this album, uh, 30 years went by before I heard it again. And I didn't hear this album again until I came across this particular record. And I was just... Uh, it was like finding an old friend. I hadn't heard it. Like I said, 30 years had gone by. But uh, it's, it's, I'm sure everybody knows In a God of the Vita. That was a great album. Another one of the albums that came out... This one is The Honeycomb. Here are The Honeycombs. This was the first rock and roll band that had a female drummer. This one's from 1964, and I think it was an original. But uh, they had the hit Have I the, the, uh, the Right and Color Slide, I think was the other side that they had. But uh, that was a good album also, uh, The Honeycomb. Uh, we did, that female drummer just died a couple years ago, I think. We lost her. 
Here's another one of those great albums that I couldn't throw away. This is the best of the James Gang featuring Joe Walsh. And, of course, it's got Walk Away, Midnight Man, Funk 49. Uh, and as you can see, the jacket is in very bad condition. Uh, and and they, 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 the bees tore it up pretty good. But the, the record still plays, and uh, it still sounds pretty good. But uh, this, this guy had some great, great rock albums. I had to throw a lot of those away because they were just... Uh, but uh, here's another one. If you remember the song White Bird, this one, I think this came out about 1970 or 71. Uh, and this was on the Columbia label. It's a beautiful day. And I, I, I love that record. I was super happy to find this album. You don't see this album very often. At least I don't. Uh, the jack is not in very good condition, but the, the, uh, the record itself is in good condition. It's a beautiful day. <clears throat> Here's another one. This is Blood, Sweat, and Tears from, I think, 1968 or 69, if I'm not mistaken. Go Down Gamblin's on this album. And uh, a good album from them, too. It's also a, a bifold, but as you see, the bees had eaten the jacket up so badly on the bottom of it that I had to put some tape on it and tape it up or lose the jacket one of the two. And this is one of the few that I could uh, actually save. But uh, there's Blood, Sweat, and Tears, B.S. and T. is what that album's called. Chicago's second album. This was a double album set that, uh, that the man had gotten. Um, it's got 25 or 6 to 4 on it. That's one of the big hits of it. Um, moving in. Um... Gosh, better in soon. There's several records on it. This is from 1970, and of course the jacket was completely destroyed, and I had to had to remake a new jacket. So that's that's my own artwork there. <laughs> of course, he had an original version of the Best of Cream on the Atco label, and this is another one I couldn't see throwing away. Uh, and I washed this one and washed it and washed it until it was able to play. It's, it's got some noise on it. Um, but it's got uh, some good good tracks on it also. Sunshine of Your Love, Badge, Crossroads, White Room, uh, SWLBR, and uh, several others. But uh, this, uh, Cream, I just love Cream. Eric Clapton was just great with Cream. I, I, I couldn't get enough of Eric Clapton, and especially Cream. Gosh, they were good, damn, when they were together. Crosby, Stills, and Nash... Um, I'm not sure if this is the first album or not, but uh, it's another good album from 1969. It's one of the first. Uh, I'm not sure if they had Young in, in the first album or not. Was it Crosby, Stills, Nash, and Young in the first album? Or was it just Crosby, Stills, and Nash? I'm not sure. But anyway, uh, that's another good album, Crosby, Stills, and Nash. I mean, these, these records, you know, I, I couldn't throw them away. I just I just couldn't do it. Um, there's Donovan's Greatest Hits, one of the few that was in good condition. It was buried, I think, way in the back of the box, and the bees couldn't get to it. But uh, I was super surprised to find uh, this album, uh, Donovan's Greatest Hits, because I, I like Donovan Yellow, Marshmallow Mellow Yellow, and uh, Sunshine Superman. And last but not least, Doors 13. Uh, again, this one has got a lot of damage on it, um, but the record is in good condition, and it's an original uh, Doors 13 album, which, which basically was the best of the Doors. Uh, I think this was after Morrison died. I'm not 100% sure on that. It's got Touch Me and Love Me Two Times, Hello I Love You, Light My Fire. It's just basically the best of the Doors. And I think this came out after Morrison died, um, the compilation album. But anyway, it was an interesting find. It was an interesting pull, and uh, a lot of I got a lot of great records out of it. And I'm, I'm uh, you know, if I ever find upgrades, of course, I'll trade them in for that. But uh, it was it was a good find, and I enjoyed it a lot. Uh, hope you did. Um, and it's time once again for us to get our satchel and go, but we'll be back before long, though. 
I want you to keep looking for us, if you will. And if you uh, drop a comment down in the comment section for us, if you would, is there something that maybe you've got some information to tell me or something that, uh, about these records, I'd be more than happy to find out. Uh, or maybe is there something I can do for you. Maybe there's an album you're looking for. Or maybe I've got a copy of it. Who knows? Until we meet you again, though, this is Mr. Rick saying that the good Lord's willing and the creeks don't rise, we'll see you for long.